Hey folks, it's what's left of a gorgeous day. I've gotten just gotten home from work. Spent um, I was up late last night setting up a new tank that arrived in the mail, and I'm going in here to show you all about it. That's coming up right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and who can resist a big box to play in? This is the Fluval Flex 32 gallon, that's 123 liters, and we're going to talk all about it right now. Yes, and here it is, affectionately called the Mega Flex. This tank is a little over twice as large as the previous uh, 15 gallon tank, and uh, it's, it's configured a little differently. Something else I got for this tank is the stand. I actually got the stand that goes with the tank, so this is the Fluval uh, issued stand for the Flex. I built a lot of aquarium stands, and they've been of you know uh, varying qualities. And I know you know maybe the best quality one would probably be to build you know build one yourself. But I was super impressed with the way they did. Like just the way they did the instructions was so smart. I mean, they had you lay out all the parts. And then it had maybe three choices that look completely different of items to just put in, in the holes for all the different parts. And then you just put them together. It is a big stand and, and it was a little heavy, but it went together uh, really well. And actually probably the most time consuming part was just kind of leveling out the doors. And that wasn't even a problem. So far, the most difficulty uh, I've had has been uh, putting the pad. It comes with a pad that goes across the bottom. <laughs> and of course, you know, it's all rolled up, you know, to make it easy to ship. So it's gonna take a lot of patience or a couple of friends to really get this this thing on there correctly. The pad really is great though, and what the purpose of it is, is just to distribute the weight across the bottom. It also kind of makes a gasket, sort of a waterproof gasket, so water doesn't go underneath the aquarium. I've been excited to get this aquarium for a long time, actually, since the aquatic experience. Uh, I made a video of it, and it did really well. I think it was one of the uh, best received videos from the aquatic experience that year and it was uh, it was really neat to see uh, people's reaction to it which was the same as mine. It's everything I liked about the Flex but just like so much bigger and uh, I'm kind of fanboying on this now but I've got to tell you this isn't a review okay the review will be later let's just consider this an unboxing and a preview uh, of what this tank is and you and I'll form our opinions about it as time goes on. Sound fair? So if you like the reverse bow front, which is good and bad, I mean, the good parts are that it's a, it's a little bit different view. It kind of gives you a false magnification. The bad part is that messes with some people. <laughs> like the, the way some people see things, you know, uh, it, it's, it can be uncomfortable. I've never personally experienced that, except for with photography. If you're a big photo buff, it can be really frustrating to shoot through the glass. Uh, my personal way to beat that is just to do the substrate a little bit higher than maybe you normally would. So especially if you're going to do a planted tank, that shouldn't be an issue anyway. But take the substrate up a little bit higher so you're not in this like bottom half of the curve. Because shooting directly into that is really difficult for some reason. You can't get anything in focus. And sometimes you can counter that by taking the uh, camera and putting it all the way to the glass or really, really close to the glass. But that doesn't seem to work uh, in the flex either. So <laughs> you can get good pictures. It's just harder. That's my fair warning. There's some other weird things I've noticed with the bigger flex, especially since I put the glass top on and I can more easily you know, observe what's happening inside the, of the filter. I must have the bottom vents blocked off a little too much or I need to open up something in there because it seems like they can't get enough water through uh, to the pump. The pump seems to keep the chamber about half empty or half full depending on your point of view. And if I try to add more water to it, like it's not the tank going low on water. If I put more water in, it'll actually overflow. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. And then when I turn the water, you know, when I turn the pump off, every, the water evens out and it's, you know, uh, at an even more appropriate level. So it makes it kind of tough to tell uh, where your water level needs to be, you know, when you start the tank up because it's gonna pump a good inch or so of water out of the back. That's probably something on me, is something I've done, but I've noticed that, you know, the other tanks too, when they get low on water, 
uh, that back chamber will start to empty out first. That doesn't seem to be the case of the flex, and I'm just not sure exactly what's going on. But I'm still working on it. So it's super interesting to see this one, which has an actually uh, a completely different filter than any of the, the flex, the flex before this, which was essentially the same as the Evo, and uh, it, it, which is sort of a beefed up version of the specs. In fact, the spec 16 gallon and the flex have the exact same sort of filter configuration. With this particular one, they went with a double version. It's the exact same sponge and the material inside of it, but there's two. And then they've still got the same pump. It's the same pump that's in the 15 gallon, well, I guess I should look first. Oh, nope. <laughs> No, this is definitely this is definitely the uh, the big brother to the other pumps I've seen. This is easily wow. Seems much more substantial. I love that that just comes right off. The front comes off so you can clean it. The ones on the Specs and the Flex and the Evo, those are all the same pump. This is obviously like a little bit bigger version, and that's good because uh, it would need more. You know, for obviously a bigger, bigger tank, right? So it also came with these things, and uh, this is an interesting little doohickey. It's a, it's a clamp to hold a second light. It comes with one Aqua Sky light, and we'll try to cover that in this video too. It's basically a Bluetooth-enabled light. We'll see how well it works in a minute. But it's got the option to plug in a second one, and uh, I'll be interested to know if they're like they can be controlled separately or if, uh, if it just kind of goes all together as one light, because that could give you all kinds of different options, especially like ramping up and going down uh, at night, kind of mixing your colors a little bit. That's interesting. I've noticed in my flex upstairs, even though the pump out area starts to go down, that other side is uh, still the same level as, as the rest of the tank. So uh, that's where I tend to keep my heater. So I guess if you want to put a heater in the back, it's going to go in the pump out area. So I'm real curious to see if it does the same thing. It really is a gorgeous tank though, and I can't wait to get it set up. Uh, I think with the extra light, I'm going to be able to use it as is. I won't necessarily have to replace uh, this lid with glass, at least not right away. I'm really jazzed to have this, this cabinet, which is actually like a lot nicer than I thought it was going to be. So it was a nice surprise, let me tell you that. In the video today, I'm going to stop just short of uh, aquascaping this tank, but why don't we go ahead and put it together? What do you say? All right, I'm going to just pop off a little tape. One thing that's interesting to note about the lid is uh, it's a nice little feeding hole. I like how they've arranged this, but this will come off and sold separately, of course, uh, is a little auto feeder. So you could actually replace this panel with a small little auto feeder and uh, feed your fish while you're away. So that's kind of kind of neat. Don't know if I'll get that, but it's cool. And I like I like the I like not having an opening right here. I love pressing that and just uh, and having a smaller hole there to just feed the fish if I want. Unless I want to put a robot there, that's always an option. And of course, back here. We've got this panel. I'm not sure. Maybe this could be for a protein skimmer if this were a saltwater version. And really, the only thing keeping it from being a saltwater tank, uh, at least for corals anyway, would be, be this light. You probably want to do it a different. You probably want a different light. Of course, you can program this with different spectrums, perhaps. You know, I know you can to some degree. I'm not sure how completely you can do that. Let's take this off here. Oh, looks like this just comes off. All right. All right, here's the rear view. I'm gonna pull up one side. You can see these are the same. These are the same sponges. These are the same sponges that we've seen before in the other, in the specs and the, uh, the other flex. There's just two of them. And there in the middle is this third hole, and this is where the pump will go. So of course, probably the first thing you want to do is go ahead and take these out. They always come encased in, uh, in plastic, 
And I'm actually not going to open this right now. Because I make the same mistake every time. When you pop this open, the white dust just goes everywhere. So I'm really going to take this out and uh, I'm going to go rinse it off with tap water. Both of these. This is black dust and white dust. Uh, that's why it comes wrapped in this. Otherwise, all throughout here would be covered in this stuff. So uh, you want to take these outside, maybe would be the best bet. Or uh, at least next to the sink and open them up and rinse them out. Of course, you want to do the other side too. But you can rinse it in tap water. Uh, if you want to go ahead and throw some dechlorinator, you know, directly onto the media when you're done or whatever, that might help. Or you can rinse it out in aquarium water if you're super paranoid about it. Uh, do that. Now these, of course, you can just uh, take these, put them off to the side. We'll come back to these in a little bit. All right, so our pump comes with a little a hose. Just not quite, mine's not quite attached. I'm not sure how yours is going to come, but this is the way it works with these. If you've never used it before, you've got a barb. And you slide this onto there. This is going to screw up and tighten on. And once you do that, that'll keep that hose on there nice and tight. But what we'd like to do is uh, place this in here or kind of see how we're going to place it. It looks like it's definitely, it definitely can't go like this. It's definitely going to be up and down like so. All right, so what I want is this to be facing this way as much as I can without the hose bending. Get it all lined up. I'm just going to screw this up here and tighten it down. It'll unscrew at the bottom here too, so don't let that mess you up. Tight, make sure it's tight there, tight there, still facing the way we want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just run this down here. In fact, let's just, let's just take this off for now. Now, of course, this has a little screw in part, so what we're going to do is I'm sliding this, I'm sliding the top of this thing right here. There's plenty of room down inside. We'll talk about what it's like down inside of there in just a second. This just screws on. Get it tight. And then you can adjust these. Oh. <laughs> Get it tight. Very cool. That's very sturdy and tight. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how this filter works. This is a this is a little bit different than uh, many of their other versions of this kind of in the tank box filter. That's basically what this is. It's kind of a souped up in the tank box filter. It's what's on the back of the specs. It's one. It's what's on the back of the flex. They're really interesting little uh, just in tank box filters that are just sort of hidden into the design of the tank. This one has this interesting pre chamber right here, sort of this little triangular shape on either side and up top we have uh, a weir for the water to flow into at the bottom uh, there's more venting what's interesting is that the sponge that goes down inside here it's only going about that far so there's there's quite a bit of space underneath and what it is is this sort of bubbles out and there's a hollow space all the way through here uh, and this is approximately where the pump is, is about right there. So that's a really different scenario than, than I've seen in any of the other tanks. And it's a mirror side on the other side. You know, we've got the, the vents over here and down here, and then, you know, the hollowed out area right there. So that's cool. It's just a little bit different than its little baby cousins. We'll see, uh, we'll see how it does. So the real question is though, can you hide a heater in here? Now it looks to me like there's a there's a good bit of space back here. I think you could probably put a heater in there. So long as this doesn't drain too low, I think putting a heater in there is possible. And you'll see the pump, you know, I kind of just place the pump in there, but you could actually even place the pump underneath uh, the side over here a little bit if you want to, because it's, there's a lot of space. I'm actually taking most of my cord and I'm going to shove it in here and then I'm just going to lay this across the top until I actually go to fill this up with a substrate and water uh, so I don't accidentally plug in the motor. So as we look at the top of this thing, uh, much like the other flexes, it's got this mesh across the top 
and uh, this is both, I, I suppose this is to hide the water line, but what it does also is it actually helps kind of hide the light a little bit. It's sort of like some sunglasses to keep you from being blinded if you look directly in there. It sort of, uh, it does offer like a little bit of shade from the light uh, as you're looking in the tank. Maybe keep any calcium deposits from being uh, super ugly right away. They've also got it on the back here. It goes all the way across the back. Uh, just to the back portion that's not covered by the filter. I know in the older ones you could take this off. I, I'm not sure how you would do it with this one. Like it seems more seamless than the other ones did before. Maybe not. Maybe it's the same. I could feel the texture so I'm sure you could remove it. If you really wanted to. But if that's the case I would probably just buy another tank. That's a lot of work. Okay so here we have the lid. and uh, This is the underside of it. And uh, as you can see here's the Aqua Sky Light. Um, there's a little bracket where it attaches. You can slide this over to one side and then put a second one in. And actually uh, use two of those. More than likely that's what I'll do. But I'm kind of curious just to see uh, to see where it's at, you know, just for, for starters. But there's virtually no setup as far as like, you know, electronics go. We're just plugging in to the wall wards. And uh, what's great about this is you won't need a timer. Uh, if you're able to use the app, if you have a smartphone, of course, and uh, I guess we'll see what it needs in a minute, but if you've got a smartphone, you won't really need much more than uh, to plug this into the wall. Okay, so this is a Bluetooth light. So all I, so you're gonna see something rare, and that is me uh, reading instructions. What I'm wondering is, is uh, if it uses the same app. See, I already have a Fluval light, I've got the Fluval Smart app. I wonder if they are uh, both controlled with this. Oh, there's an Aqua Sky. Okay. Yep, so we go right to the little Fluval here. And you can see I've labeled my other one, Face Tank. But I want to add one, so I'm going to hit plus. And then uh, it sees that I have, there's one that I haven't added nearby, the Aqua Sky. I'm going to click there. And uh, this light's going to blink, which indicates something's happening. Oh. Oh, okay. So I checked the box, and now we're inside. Let's take a look. Whoa! A lot of controls, including the ones that have you know, the silly uh, lightning storm ones and stuff like that. <laughs> That's funny. Sometimes they get a little bit more sophisticated. Cloudy day. Some of these cloudy day ones are actually pretty fun. I've enjoyed those. You notice a lot of these controls, they really, they look like the old, uh, when these, when LED lights first came out, they'd have like the traditional sort of IR remote. In fact, the last Flex had sort of the IR remote. And the controls up here look very, very similar. But uh, I'm gonna switch it over to the other side here. We'll go to auto. Pop. All right, now it looks a lot like uh, the parameters of the other tank, which is really cool. I can set a sunrise, a sunset, and uh, I can also do a moonlight if I want. I tend not to do that. I don't really trust that it's not growing algae. In fact, I think I'm going to turn my moonlights off some of the, like the big tank too, just to see if it helps a little bit. Uh, but moonlight, those moonlights can be really handy if you if you've got nocturnal fish. I like it because I can see Mr. Tubes moving around a little bit uh, when he comes out at night. So that's why I've kind of put off taking it off the uh, 200. I am super stoked to have this uh, and, and to have it matched. That means I can basically match it up. That means all my lights downstairs except for the Spec 16 are going to gradually come on uh, in the morning and then gradually go off at night. That's really neat. So I can time them all together and uh, Wow, times have really changed. And it'll be interesting to see, like if I double up, I'm not, I'm not sure at all. I haven't, I haven't even read these <laughs> instructions, so I guess I can, I can do what I usually do and just toss them because I already know how to work the app. Set the program in here. Basically, we're gonna set. So right here on the app, we're gonna go sunrise, and I'm gonna have that start about 
That'll start about 10 o'clock. And it's going to end at noon. Sure. Then the daylight color, I'll just keep that for now. Oh. And then the sunset, we'll have that, uh, it's at 1700 hours. So sunset set for 1700 hours, which is about five o'clock. And uh, that sounds about right. And we're gonna have it end, well actually I'm gonna move that up a little bit. I wanna make it close to like 6.30 or so. Yep, there we go. And then I'm gonna have it end. And then I'm gonna have the sunset cycle end uh, several hours later, or a couple hours later, and, uh, and that'll complete the light cycle. Boom. I can also set what I want at night. And it looks like right now it's set with like maybe a 5% blue. If you really wanted to see in there, I could crank that up to 100% blue. It's probably hard to see it there, but that's really blue. I don't need that. In fact, I'm going to take this to, oh, I think just for fun, I'll do 3% to start with. Save. And that's as easy, that's, that's all it takes. You can move this graph around any way you want. So I got this segmented light cycle, and uh, the beginning and end of this light cycle have sort of this tapering of the light. It's, uh, it's pretty dramatic within the first hour, but it's, uh, it's pretty neat, especially at night. At night, it's pretty interesting watching it wind down. It'll just kind of like, it goes for just a second, then you'll see a couple more of the LEDs will go off, and then another color will go off, and it just kind of gradually mellows out until it's almost nothing, then the lights go out. Sounds like something that would be especially uh, useful if you had maybe temperamental fish or, or fish that would be real disturbed by the lights like suddenly coming on, especially in a planted tank where the lights tend to be pretty intense. There's all kinds of stuff you can do in here to kind of goof around and play, and uh, I like that. I'm glad that they included it in a in an aquarium like this because they're not cheap. I really dig the stand that came with this kit. It's got this nice sort of indention in the top of the doors that makes it easy to, to get a hold of them and open. The very bottom back, the very bottom back of this is all is open. So it's got a nice shelf with a back to it so you don't like push things over uh, in here, like a half, half the length shelf. And then it's got a space, uh, an open space in the back where you could easily stick uh, maybe CO2 or a canister or something like that underneath or just store other aquarium supplies. There's actually a good amount of room in this cabinet and that's good. It's not, it'll be a good handy space to, to come get things. If for some reason I don't like the way this pump is working out, I could always use the Fluvals 107 <laughs> and perhaps augment uh, the filtering capacity in there. There's plenty of room to put some, a filter like that in there, one of those small canister filters, if I wanted to. And I promise you, this was the easiest cabinet I've ever had to build. The instructions were perfect. Well, first impressions are really good. Uh, I was really, really hoping uh, that it would work with the app, and, and yeah, I could have just probably Googled that and known it beforehand, but sometimes a surprise is good. Now, I knew I'd be getting the tank, whether or not it worked with the app, and so that's just kind of a pleasant bonus. I'm just glad they're continuing on with what they did before, like with the little planted tank light. Uh, I've really enjoyed that, and I've enjoyed using it with the app, so... So I'm really glad that it works that way, especially without uh, having to add anything. So I'm not having to do, to do anything but just, you know, download the app to my phone. There's no extra controller to buy or anything. This just comes straight with this built in. Now, can you plug this up to a regular timer? I don't know. And uh, I probably won't know because I don't need to. Okay, so I'm going to stop it there. Uh, and I'm going to stop and I'm going to think about how I'm going to aquascape this. I have a couple of ideas. I've got some, I've got some thoughts. I've got some thoughts on what I'd like to do in here. I already know I've, already, I've got my substrate already. Uh, if you saw the last Aqua Shopper video, uh, I was kind of getting supplies with this in mind. This one and the one I have upstairs. Wow, I've got a lot of aquascaping to do. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it for next week, but, but, but one of my plans 
one of the things I'd really like to do is uh, I'd like to start breaking down the 55. And I'd like to take its plants. I would like to add them here and then over here in the 210. Now the 210's already got a lot of plants, but it could probably take a few more. So if I just load this thing up with plants and uh, at the same time take some of the best samples over here and then take, <laughs> and take some really good samples if I can find a bunch of good ones from around the tanks here and really set this up. I'd like to set up a nice, pleasant, low light kind of uh, tank, basically like a lot of my other tanks. Even if I add the other light and I decide to do CO2 later, which I haven't decided yet. Even if I decide to do CO2 and add a second light and really beef it up in there later, which I'm not sure I'm going to do. It looks it looks pretty good right now. It's a little bit dimmer than like the Phoenix upstairs. So it might need a second one to really be a good planted tank. But I'm going to start off with some stuff that won't be too difficult. You know, I, I love I love Anubius, and uh, I love the Crips and stuff like that, and none of that requires much light. Cool, I've got some great ideas already. I can't wait to show you guys. Uh, this is going to be set up and running really soon, so be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you'll see when I'm posting. That's all I got for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back next week with another video. See you then. Bye-bye. This tank comes with one aqua squat. It went together pretty, but it's got the aqua, that uh, back rear, rear weir. But what we're, uh, right, so we've got the underside of the, of the, of the, of the uh, wow. Got you.